Hey guys, what's up and why am I laughing already? I'm so nervous. <laughs> ah! Hey guys, what's up and welcome to my channel. <laughs> I am incredibly nervous for this, um, challenge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's call it a challenge that I am about to embark on. For the next five days, I am going to be furniture flipping. And whatever I make furniture flipping, I am going to donate. And there is a little bit of a background story as to where this idea came from. Last year around this time, my little nephew, who is nine years old, had this idea out of the blue that he wanted to make drawings and sell them. And in his words, raise money for kids that don't get cool Christmas presents. So he asked his dad what he could do. My brother ended up posting on his Facebook and Instagram. People donated, my nephew made a bunch of drawings, and then he took the money he raised, bought a bunch of toys, and donated to Toys for Tots. So this got me thinking, if my nephew can take some time to do something really awesome for other people, why am I not doing the same thing? And then I had to figure out what I could even do, and that's when I landed on furniture flipping. I'm not really sure where I'm going to donate. I have to figure that out over the next few weeks because my goal is to donate before Christmas. <laughs> Fingers crossed, because I have just under two weeks now. So with all of that being said, I have a lot of work to do. Let's get started on this first furniture flip. Okay, so let's just, let's just talk for a second. December is not known as the best time of year to furniture flip. So over the next five days, I have to be very strategic about what I do, because of course my goal is to get these pieces sold off quickly and and lucky for me, I did do a series last year where I spent four weeks furniture flipping right around this time. So I'm gonna take what I learned from furniture flipping last year and apply it to the next five days. So my first like strategy or plan that I have is flip big pieces. In my last week of furniture flipping last year, I did a dresser and a cabinet. And those pieces are the pieces I made the most amount of money on. So I figured this week I should stick to dressers and cabinets. So of course this first piece up is a dresser. It's not a terribly big dresser, but I kind of liked the size of it because I feel like I can get this knocked out today and get this piece listed by tomorrow morning. Um, my plan for this dresser is to paint a part of it and then also leave a part of it like exposed wood. It is pretty rough in some areas, so I have to patch up those areas. So I'm gonna get started patching up the bad areas, lightly sanding the areas I'm going to paint, fully sanding down the areas I am going to leave exposed wood and then priming the areas I am gonna paint. So in the spirit of Christmas, let's freaking flip some furniture so that I can donate some money. Okay, so um, I have a few coats of primer on this dresser. Everything's been sitting for a while, so now we can get to painting. So the paint that I am using is just some leftover green paint from the dresser that is in my studio. Green is really popular right now. People really like the dresser that's in my studio, so I'm hoping people also like this dresser and it sells quickly. Um, this dresser should need only two coats. There might be a few areas that need a touch of a third coat. I'll add some top coat new hardware, and this first flip will be all done. So I was a bit nervous painting this dresser green, 
but I thought with the shape of the dresser and then with the fun wood accents, it would sell some kind of like fun retro vibe in the end. And unfortunately, I didn't get this dresser done in one day. On the second day, I went to finish it up and put top coat on, only to realize there were some areas that needed a third coat of paint. So I just went ahead and did a full third coat of paint over the whole dresser, let that sit, and then I could finally do top coat. And while the top coat was drying, I had to run out and buy new hardware for this piece. So for all of the bigger drawers, I went with just plain sleek black handles. And then for the two smaller drawers at the top, I got some fun accent knobs. And I really am glad I spent the money on the hardware because this definitely sold the whole retro vibe I was going for. I picked out a few things around my house that I thought would further sell the retro vibe I was going for, took some pictures and got it listed as quickly as I possibly could. So I bought this dresser for $50. I spent $30 on the new hardware, so I had a total of $80 into this piece and it sold for $250, giving me my first profit of $170 that I get to donate. Okay guys, I hope you liked that first piece. Oh, and you guys also know if it's sold and how much it's sold for. Huh, wow, you have so much information that I currently don't have because the first piece is sitting with a coat of primer on it. But that brings me to my next strategy or plan that I have in place, and that is multitasking. Obviously, when you're painting furniture, there are points where you have to let things dry. So so I'm going to make the most of my time and get started on this second piece. So as you can see, my second piece up is this lovely dresser. This dresser is in great condition. I just feel like the color's a little outdated and it does have some cool details on it. So my plan is to paint this thing black because I think the black is gonna really bring out the details and make this dresser feel a little bit more modern. So what I'm gonna do is lightly sand everything down, two coats of primer, two coats of paint, top coat, all of that stuff. Let's get to it. sure why but this dresser took me so long to finish and I tried to figure out why and I think I came to the conclusion that it was just a big dresser and so every coat of paint did take a long time so on the first day I got the two coats of primer done on the second day I got the three coats of paint that this dresser needed and some areas even needed four and then by the third day I could add top coat and then the dresser was all painted and all done and it sat around because I was trying to use the original hardware on this piece. But one of the handles had a lock on it. So I had to figure out how to get that lock off. And lucky for me, I didn't know this, I am married to a criminal mastermind who knows how to pick locks. I'm just kidding, he tried for 20 minutes, was not successful, so he got a saw and cut it off. So finally, after four days, I could finish up this dresser, quickly get it staged, and get it listed. So I spent $60 on this piece. I spent no money on supplies to fix it up, so I had a total of $60 into it and it sold for $225, giving me a profit of $165. And that brings my total that I get to donate up to $335. Yay! Excuse me, stop attacking me! Okay guys, it is uh, day three, and I feel like I got like nothing done yesterday. And in real time, I am still working on the second piece. I know you guys got to see how that looks, but I am waiting to put the 
top coat on that dresser and get that all finished up and listed. But to keep with my second strategy, I gotta multitask and get started on this third piece. So for this third piece, I really love this dresser. There's really beautiful details in it, but something I noticed after I bought it and got it back here is this dresser used to have a mirror and I was not sold the mirror with this dresser. So there's two big holes on the top um, that I'm gonna have to figure out how to fill in. And then beyond that, I am going to be, drum roll, painting this dresser black. I was shocked for you, seriously. <laughs> um, so I know I painted the last dresser black. It wasn't a true black, but I still painted it black. But the reason I am painting this dresser black is because of my third strategy. And that is do what works. Obviously we wanna do things that are going to sell and sell quickly. And last year when I was furniture flipping for a month, everything I painted black sold very quickly. And one of them even sold for more money than I had it listed. So I figured I should kind of just stick to that. So you guys know the drill. I am going to lightly sand this down. I am going to prime it with two coats of primer and then paint it. Let's get started on this third piece. <laughs> yeah. When I saw this dresser and I saw the hardware on it, it instantly reminded me of the hardware that I put on my mom's nightstands when I did her bedroom makeover. So I instantly knew doing a true black on this dresser was going to look beautiful. And the paint that I did use on it is Black Magic by Sherwin-Williams. This is leftover enamel paint I have from the dining chairs I fixed up in my kitchen. And the enamel paint does the such a beautiful smooth finish but the paint is incredibly thin so this dresser took a lot of coats and between each coat I had to wait four hours so let's just say the painting took a lot of time but it was worth it because this piece turned out beautiful and I was hoping to use all of the original hardware on this piece but unfortunately one of the larger drawers the knob was broken and while I was painting I did try to fix it but no such luck. So I went out and I got new knobs for just the larger drawers. And this was my absolute favorite piece. I don't think we have to ask why. It was just freaking beautiful. And I also was a big fan of the staging I did with it. It was simple, but vintagey and moody and everything just came together. So I bought this dresser for $60. I spent $15 on the new hardware that I got for it. So I had a total of $75 into this piece and it sold for $200, giving me a profit of $125. And that brings my total up to $460. Okay guys, let's get started on this fourth piece. And I know it is a bit smaller. It is the smallest of the four pieces that I've done thus far. But if I get the piece that I want to be my fifth and final piece, that is a big piece of furniture. So I know that is going to be very time consuming and I just wanna have the first four pieces done and out of the way so that tomorrow I only have to focus on the final piece. So I'm not really sure what this cart's original intent was supposed to be, but what I'm gonna do is paint it and fix it up and stage it as a bar cart. The only area I am not painting is this little door area because I feel like if I paint it, um, the paint might get into the tracks and then the door might not open. So the paint that I am going to be using on this cart is Black Bean, which is the paint that I use used on my built-in that is in my studio. And this brings me to my fourth strategy. And some of you guys might have already picked up on this. My fourth strategy is using what I have because the more money I spend on supplies to fix up a piece, the less I'm gonna make in profit and the less I'm gonna be able to donate. So my goal was to just use paint I have left over from previous projects. So once Clyde decides that he is done laying on my lap, I am going to get started. 
Oh, are you are you ready? Are you done? Oh, he's done! Yay! Let's get started. <laughs> I truly feel like I have nothing to say about this piece. It was easy and it was also the perfect fourth piece to do because I was able to start this piece and fully finish it while also finishing up the second and the third piece. So within a few hours of each other, I was able to get the second, third, and fourth piece listed, which was really nice and a huge weight off my shoulders having those listed. So I bought this cart for $15. I put no money into it to fix it up and it sold. 30 minutes ago, just in the nick of time because we are three days away from Christmas. And it did sell for $40, giving me a profit of $25, and that brings my total up to $485. Okay, it is the last day. Where did the first four days go? Because I'm pretty sure I like blacked out. It is such a blur, but I also feel so much better that the first four pieces are listed. And I am also a little bummed because the piece I wanted to get for my final piece, it didn't go through. They got another offer that was better than my offer, so I didn't get the piece. But that was also a blessing in disguise because I would have been up all night trying to get that done. So I just went out to a Goodwill that's near me and found another little rolling cart. Obviously this girl has uh, seen better days. Um, so I'm gonna get the uh, top, you know, reattached. And then also these doors just swing in. So I have to add a little magnet stopper so that they actually stop. And up until last night, <laughs> I was just gonna go ahead and paint this thing black. But now in real time, the green dresser has sold and so I'm thinking green might be kind of fun for this cart. So I am going to get to uh, fixing this thing up. If anything changes, I'll let you know. Spoiler alert, nothing changed and this flip was very easy and very straightforward. But something I forgot to mention while filming was my fifth strategy. And honestly, this is the most important strategy and you guys also might have already picked up on this strategy. So my fifth strategy was don't list the pieces too high. I knew I was in a time crunch, so I wasn't trying to squeeze every little cent I could out of each piece. I was just trying to make something so that I could donate something. And also in the spirit of Christmas, I wasn't trying to nickel and dime anyone. I was just trying to find people that genuinely loved the piece and work with them on their budget. Okay, last item listed. And now we wait. And I didn't have to wait long because this cart sold the next morning. So people seem to really like green. And I bought this cart for $10. I spent $10 on new knobs and the little magnet stoppers so the doors didn't just like swing in. So that brings my total up to $20 that I had into the piece. And this cart sold for $60, giving me a profit of $40 and bringing my grand total that I made furniture flipping up to $525 dollars that I get to donate, which I am pretty happy with. For five days of furniture flipping, selling the pieces off quickly, and doing all of this the week before Christmas, I, I am pleased. I am very pleased. <laughs> and over the last week and a half, I have been trying to figure out where I am going to donate this money. And then it dawned on me, there is an organization I have been giving to almost every year around Christmas time since I was little. And that is some Samaritan's Purse. They are a Christian organization that helps with victims of war, disease, disaster, 
poverty and famine. And they've also been around for 50 years, so they are very well established. And the reason I know about them and the reason I have been donating to them around Christmas time since I was little is because they have a thing called Operation Christmas Child. It's where you decorate a shoebox, fill it with essentials, and then you get to pick out fun toys and stuff, and they deliver it to children around the world. So I have decorated many a shoebox in my day. <laughs> and now in the great year 2022, you don't have to put together a shoebox. You can put together a virtual shoebox where they fill it with essentials, you pick out the toys, and then they deliver it. So a few hours ago, I took $200 of the money I raised and made eight shoe boxes. And then I took the rest of the money and just went ahead and donated to Samaritan's Purse. And that is it, guys. I hope you liked this video. As you can tell, I was really nervous to tackle such a large project so last minute, but I'm really glad I just went for it because I did make some money and I did get to donate something. And a huge shout out to my little nephew for inspiring me to do this. Also, I would not be a good aunt if I didn't mention he has a YouTube channel. So if you wanna make his day, if not his year, you should definitely go subscribe. And this is also my last video for 2022, which is crazy to me that we are already at the end of 2022. But thanks so much for watching, and I will see you in 2023 for more projects and DIYs. Bye guys.